Hello, my name is Monica Geraldo. And I'm Anthony Masiha. My name is Louise Pine. And I'm Alyssa Podgeberic, and we're You're in Trouble. And today we're going to be tackling the medical myth, is coffee a diuretic? A diuretic is a substance that causes an increased passage of urine. In clinical practice, they are most often administered as drugs to treat hypertension or high blood pressure. By raising the volume of excreted urine, diuretics act to decrease total body fluid levels and subsequently lower blood pressure. Diuretics are classified based on their specific mechanism of action. Here we are going to discuss one of the more common mechanisms by which diuretics increase urine production. From this simplified diagram of a nephron, we will focus our attention to the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Normally as filtrate flows through this area of the nephron, sodium, potassium, and chloride ions are reabsorbed from the lumen of the tubule into the interstitial space. Water passively follows and thus the volume of filtrate and ultimately urine is decreased. Certain diuretics will block the symporter that moves these ions across the tubule wall. Consequently, the osmotic force driving water to leave the tubule is lowered, resulting in an increased volume of urine produced. Because these diuretics mediate their effects specifically at the loop of Henle, they are referred to as loop diuretics. So what about coffee? Is coffee itself a diuretic? Or rather, is there an active ingredient in coffee that provides it with diuretic properties? The answer lies in scientific evidence, from which what we've explored suggests that caffeine and its metabolites may potentially impose diuretic properties on the elixir of life. I mean coffee. The mechanism discussed on the previous slide could be argued as a possible means by which caffeine produces diuresis. However, this theory is far from proven. Contradiction exists between studies, and proposed evidence, when examined critically, tends to fall short of convincing. Much of the existing evidence can be traced back to the study done by Eddie and Downs at the University of Alberta in 1928. They conducted a surveillance study in which the excretion patterns of three subjects were studied over time. Their aim was to determine whether tolerance plays a role in coffee's diuretic effect. Trends in the raw data comparing caffeine dose and total urine output were loose and did not carry well across subjects. In some instances, a more caffeinated state even led to a comparative decrease in urine output. However, the pattern found to exist between the two experimental states, coffee drinking and coffee abstinence, is well summarized in the table displaying minimum effective diuretic dose. That is the minimal drug dose required to produce apparent diuretic effects. It is very obvious that once subjects were dehabituated, the drug produced diuresis in much lower concentrations than it had in the caffeine tolerant state. This statement, taken directly from the study, is bold and quite misleading, not to mention followed up with no tangible quantitative results. Erroneous statements such as this may have led the average non-critical reader to a false conclusion, spearheading the perpetuation of this medical myth for the last century. We noticed that there were several studies that both support and argue that caffeine has diuretic effects. Those that are blue support the myth, while those in red argue it. In Rise and Hubbard et al. study in 2006, a crossover design was performed for 16 volunteers ranging from 18 to 28 years of age. Subjects were tested to see the difference of urinary output in those that consume caffeine, energy drinks, both and neither. It was found that those that had consumed 240 grams of caffeine had a significant increase in urine output versus those that abstained from coffee. In Passamore et al. study in 1987, the relationship between varying doses was tested. 45, 90, 180, and 360 milligram doses were provided to eight healthy young men. What's important to note is unlike the previous study mentioned, all participants were habitual users of caffeine. 100 milliliters of water was ingested every four hours and total urine output was measured. They found that the only, dif the only significant difference in urinary output was in the highest dose used. So with our perfect study in mind, there were two key takeaways from the articles we reviewed. The first being that experiments that used higher dosages were more likely to support the myth that coffee is in fact a diuretic. The second trend is that when habitual users were used for the study, there was a higher likelihood that the findings of the study were insignificant. In our perfect world experiment, we will recruit 1,000 people aged 20 to 35 with overall healthy conditions that will be randomly selected from southwestern Ontario. 
we require that participants have never consumed coffee before because this eliminates the possibility that coffee will not have a diuretic effect in them as they have been habituated to it. The duration of the study will be six weeks and no liquids are allowed to be consumed 24 hours prior to the study. There is to be absolutely no intake of other possible diuretic substances. Participants will consume a set amount of 10 cups of water daily for the duration of the study, along with one pill with each cup. No other drinks will be consumed. Participants will be provided with a dietary plan to follow. And lastly, participants will be provided with a total of six packages labeled week one to six, each containing 70 pills and 10 pills for each day of the week. Participants will not know the amount of caffeine in each pill. From studies previously conducted, we determined possible levels at which coffee could have diuretic effects in the body and used these as reference points. The dosage of caffeine in each pill will correlate with the participant's weight and the total daily dosage will be spread out over 10 pills. During week one, participants will consume pills with no caffeine so that total daily urine output for this week will serve as a control. Amount of caffeine consumed will increase in increments of 2 mg per kilogram until a maximum level of 10 mg per kilogram is reached during the 6th week. For example, a 60 kg person uh, during the second week of the study will consume a total of 120 mg daily spread over 10 pills. Each pill will contain 12 mg of caffeine. Participants will use a container provided to collect their total urine output every day and record their total volume at the end of each day. This data is to be submitted every night to the coordinators via an online system. During the analysis of the collected data, we will determine whether there is any significant difference between independent groups. To do this, we will perform a one-way ANOVA test. If a significant difference is found, we will follow up with a paired t-test to determine where the difference is. As it stands, there is no conclusive answer whether coffee is a diuretic. If coffee were a diuretic, its effect would seem to be most evident at higher than physiologically relevant concentrations. A possible explanation could be that at lower concentrations, the body can quickly metabolize caffeine and negate its potentially diuretic effects. What we can conclude is that the average coffee drinker will likely have little, if any, increase in urinary output.